Welcome to the Solar Cam University channel. This video's topic is creating a STL holder for a turning holder. So you'll see on screen that I have a SOLIDWORKS model of a turning holder with the insert already installed. Now you can get these models from your, uh, your tooling supplier and uh, they'll either come in a step format, an IGES format, uh, or maybe an original STL format. Uh, whichever format you get, if it's not STL, you'll bring it into SOLIDWORKS and then you'll create the STL file like I'm about to do. But if you get an original STL file from your supplier, you can skip these initial steps here. So um, to begin, I need measurements of this file so that when I get into the SOLIDCAM STL holder creation screen, I have the dimensions I can plug in. So first thing I'd like to show you is the origin that this part is sitting on is actually right there. And that will also serve as my, my uh, holder mounting point. So when I get into the STL creation screen, you'll see that the red dot, the holder mounting point, how this holder is going to sit in your turret, is exactly sitting right there. You'll see that the Z-axis is the rotary axis right there. So that should perfectly insert itself exactly onto our machine. Now, with that being said, there's the origin. I need to know the outermost points of where the insert is sitting. So how far in X it's sitting and how far in Y, or sorry, in Z it's sitting from that origin. And because we're talking about a circular part, I want to make my measurements easy. I'm actually creating some planes on those points there for that exact purpose. But let's say we want to recreate that plane. So I'm just going to go to plane one. And let me just hide that. And I'll recreate that plane to show you how we would create a plane real quick. So I'll go to assembly, reference geometry, plane. And now I'm creating a, uh, a plane. Now for planes, we need reference points. So I want to have a plane that is parallel to the right plane of the overall model. So I'm just going to go to my tree here and choose right plane, choose parallel. And now I need a second reference to actually cement where this plane is sitting. So right now it's just parallel to the right plane, but I want it to be coincident with the point that I created right there. And again, those points I just created by doing a sketch on, on a flat surface. In this case, the flat surface of the insert. Now I have my plane there. I can take simple dimensions of all those points there by going to evaluate, measure, and let's say I want exactly where that, that point on that insert is sitting relative to the origin. So I'll go to right plane, and you'll see in my little measurement window here, it's going to measure from the right plane, and let's go to plane three. So now I have the normal distance as 1.37795. And that is one of the dimensions you'll need for the STL creation. The other dimensions will be how far it's sitting down there. So again, we'll just go to measure. If I click in the empty space, I clear my selections. And I want a measurement from that point to, let's say, where our plane is sitting. So I believe that is the front plane. So we have... The front plane basically represents that plane right there. That's where the origin is sitting. So normal distance here is 5.90551 inches. And again, I'm going to use those in the creation of the STL holder. So now that I have my dimensions, I'm going to turn this actually into the STL file I'm going to use. So one of the things you want to make sure with STL files is that the units match um, the final STL. So I have all my dimensions. I want to measure the STL when I'm done. I want to make sure that I actually output this in the correct units. So I'll go to the bottom right corner here and click on Edit Document Units. I'll make sure that I'm in inches. And then I'll go to File, Save As. So I check to make sure that I'm measuring in inches as you see there by the IPS, and the units that this uh, file is in is in inches. So that when I go to Save As, Save As an STL, I'll go to Options, make sure that I'm actually saving this as a STL file in inches. Um, you'll also notice that this is an assembly file. This SOLIDWORKS assembly file consists of two solids, and actually in this lower solid right here is actually the, the lower, the, let me just jump out of here, the lower part here, and the insert. So there's actually three solids here. To save this as a single STL file, I'll make sure I select the box that says single STL file. So I'll go to options. Once again, we'll make sure it's in inches. Save all components to an assembly of an assembly in a single file. So that will guarantee that we're going to create one STL file so we don't confuse SolidCam as to the different solids in that screen. Also, 
I want to click on do not translate STL output data to a positive space. What that'll do is that will actually output this STL still using that same origin. So when we get to the solid cam STL creation screen, we'll actually see that the origin we're using there is the origin we took from SolidWorks. So I'll click on OK, or I would click on OK to create it, but because I already created it, I don't want to overwrite my file. So I'm just going to say OK. And that's the file that I created originally. So let's just cancel out of here. We'll save what we've done here. Close this. And I'm going to open up that file that I created a second ago. So that's it right there. That's the STL. I'm going to translate it. So SolidWorks is just going to translate that STL for me. <clears throat> and the reason I'm reopening it up from the STL, I'm basically translating it twice, is because I want to confirm that the dimensions were correct. So once again, I'll go to measure. And one of the measurements I have is actually uh, this distance right here. So we'll click here and here. And 1.25748 is the dimension that I took from the original SOLIDWORKS file. So my scales are correct, my units are correct. I can feel confident that when I translate this to an STL holder, it'll be correct. So let's go to create that actual holder. So we'll go tools, solid cam, tool library, tool STL holders. In this folder, I'd like to add a new STL. And I'm gonna browse to where I have that STL that I just created. So that one right there, click OK. You'll see that it translated with the origin from SolidWorks. And it's got these units from the previously defined STL holder. So generally when you, do, when you bring these in, they'll be uh, zeros by default, but because I've got a couple of STLs already here, it brought them in. But you can see when I set those all to zero, the tool mounting point and the holder mounting point are all set at the origin. So because I set the coordinate system at that origin, I'm not gonna touch the holder mounting point. I can leave those at zero. That's where I want the tool to be uh, mounted onto the turret. So that's good there. Now we just need to move the tool mounting point. And that is actually the, 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 the area where we're gonna put the, the, where the insert is sitting. <clears throat> so tool mounting point, from the dimensions we took earlier, we know that the distance in Z is minus 5.90551. We'll see that it's now moving it to the edge there. It actually sits from the center in positive X by that 1.37795, okay? So that is actually the imaginary point of the insert. Now, again, this holder holds a circular insert, so we'll have to look at it as those are the, the, uh, the bounding box or the tangent points of a round insert. So that is where the insert is going to sit. In the insert definition, it'll have a corresponding mounting point that should sit in that exact spot. And we're gonna see that once we actually use this holder. So once you put all those dimensions in there, you can save this and exit. And then we'll go to our part file. And let's actually create that tool. So go to the tool table, add external turning tool. Because we have a custom holder, I'm gonna use this just as insert only. And let's plug in our insert. So it's a metric insert. And I'm going to choose from the table my proper definition here. So this should be a RCMT twelve o four S. And there's our insert floating uh, near my mouse. So. The easiest way to see how this is sitting uh, relative to the holder and all that is to bring up the tool picture. So there's the insert alone. And we'll check out the mounting as well. So this is the actual turret. Let me just turn all that off. You can see the insert sitting right there. Now the tool tip position is off again from a previous selection. So I'm just gonna zero those out once again. And we'll go to the original screen, click on holder, go to our global holders, choose the one we just defined, and there it is. So, uh, because the tool mounting point was set to the uh, to the same sort of mounting point as where the insert is sitting, that is sitting correctly. If we take a look at the mounting here, 
that is sitting correct. And if I bring back the turret, that is sitting in the machine correctly as well. So essentially, between these three windows, you'll see exactly how this is sitting. Now, the, this came in very nicely. So obviously, because of the video, I'm making it look nice. But in the creation of the STL, in the assigning of the STL holder and this screen here in terms of the mounting, there's various options to shift it around to, to get it to fit. And really all you're going to do is uh, use the dimensions that you recorded from the SOLIDWORKS file. And here, if it didn't sit correctly, it's most likely because it's in the wrong um, in the wrong relative position using these coordinate systems. So you can do a flip around X, Y, and Z, or you can shift your insert over here. Uh, but generally, if you use the dimensions as I showed you, and you define your STL, again, as you showed you, you should have this sitting exactly as you like, as you see in this video. Any other questions on this or anything else you see in the videos uh, on this YouTube channel, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can always send us your parts and your questions via the ticket system at telecamsupport.com, or watch the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel for more help with Telecam. Thanks for watching.